Hello everyone. Hi guys. Welcome back. Um, sorry, it's been a little while since yeah. we've seen you, but we're we're very delighted to life be back. Life got in the way a little bit. It did. We, but, we, but we, we got busy. life out of the way and perfume back. Yeah, the perfume way. is the priority, and that's what we want that's to talk to you about, about today. We've got a very interesting range again here for you. Um, and I don't know if it's one that we've really spoken about well, much. Well, we've, we've certainly it? spoken about the perfumer behind them. We have, who we love. So we've, we've raved a lot about uh, Turkish leather and Mora oh. from Prin Parfum, um, and the nose behind those was Prin Lomros. So this is another house uh, called Strangers, um, but the same nose, Prin Lomros. Same guy. And this range... This, it is the same nose. He's not had a nose job or anything. No, he's not. He's the exact same nose. Both, both, both nostrils still working well. Perfect. And um, he, this range is called the LGBTIQ range. And so they are, they're, they're all, five of them are actually based on films, I think. Yeah. So Prin, before he went into perfume, he uh, travelled to Cannes and then some, spent some time in France yeah. studying film. So he was gone he into really film cares, before he got into perfume. Yeah. So these are all inspired by characters. So should we just get stuck in? Let's go for it. We've, we've <coughs> had a little smell of these, haven't we, already? Yeah, we can have another. another. Special. We've, we've actually had these for a while. So we've had these for a couple of months yeah. now. Um, I should say um, these were sent to us um, by Prim. Yeah. Very, very kind. Very, very, very grateful of that. But if you've watched our reviews before, you will know that even if people send things to us, if we don't like it, we will, we will have it. Absolutely, take. absolutely. Um, we, we don't like it. So let's get stuck in. The first one is called Oliver. So all of them come in these little dinky 30ml uh, uh, bottles. Um, they're EDP and they are $69 um, for a 30ml bottle. And we were just talking, Great value, about, isn't it? talking about this before really? and certainly for us, is once you have a few fragrances and start to collect them, 30ml is the size you want. Often if yeah. I buy a 100ml, you know, I will you know, split part of the bottle and, and in any kind of decants you only really need 30 mil, so at $69, it's you know, perfect. I, I think it's a really good price. Cheaper than Sauvage, you know, we, yeah, exactly. as we discovered. Um, so, the first one is called Oliver. This is uh, based on a, a film called Call Me By Your Name. Um, and Oliver is the character which, it's a kind of a coming of age story, this uh, 16 year old boy, this, this man, um, yeah, I guess you could call him a man, a, he's a PhD student, comes into, uh, uh, comes into his life, and the rest of the film unfolds. Really, really beautiful film, and we were, I'll just show I need to see, see it, film, which I'm but looking, just looking to. I was just showing him the trailer, and the film is set in this just incredibly beautiful um, Italian villa yeah. where every day oh, is, so evocative, is, is yeah. sunny, uh, um, completely clear blue skies. There are fruit trees everywhere. They always seem to be eating fresh fruit all the time. They're right by the sea, they go swimming in the sea, beautiful. in lakes, beautiful. and this evokes quite a lot of that. Let's have a, a, a respritz. It's about as far removed from central London as you could possibly Yeah, it's been for, raining it? all day here, it's oh. grey, and this, I mean I actually wore this um, a couple of weeks ago when it was snowing. Wow. Because it's so utterly transportative and... It's like, like an anti-weather device. It's just it? absolutely Let's get away that, uh, heavenly. So a lot of Frin's fragrances, <laughs> yeah. particularly Turkish leather and more, which we've spoken about before, are big and heavy and dark and rich. This is light and bright and uplifting and yeah. beautiful. So these the, the fruit trees that I spoke of in this film, that's what I get. Um, and I say I don't I don't necessarily I don't really get lemon or bergamot. I get this kind of quince note. So it's a quite a sour, yeah, bitter um, It's more tart than just a simple citrus mm. and it's more it's more green and earthy than uh, yeah. just a fruit on its own. It is it is connected to a tree. You can you can almost smell mm. the, the sort of or the, the terroir, you know, in a sense. Absolutely, and I, before, like I don't that. know. I don't think he lists petit grain. No, he doesn't list petit grain. But I get some really kind There's of oily else, citrus to yeah. it as well. It's not necessarily it's juicy. It's oily. There's a, there's like an a orange real blossom aspect. It's a herbal feel to it as well. A kind of a kind of hint of fresh mint, which gives it this kind of mojito yeah. color. And there's just subtle bits of maybe peach and apricot to this kind of rounded fruit cocktail, but it's never, it's never like a sickly sweet kind of Chiora no, kind no. of uh, fruit cocktail. It's really it's perfectly balanced, bitter. Isn't it? it smells yeah. like real fresh fruit, and it brings a smile to my face straight, you know, straight away when oh, I smell that. It's uplifting. It just made me smile. There's also this, it's um, you know, slight sea salt vibe, which makes you think of of fruit groves, you know, by the sea. Which just adds a slight extra dimension mm. to it, and again, salt, a little bit of saltiness without being aquatic. Oh no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't go it doesn't in that direction. Feel like your obvious aquatic scent. 
I love when I wore this when it was snowing it's a couple really of weeks beautiful. ago. I loved it, but it's this really in the summer will be absolutely perfect, amazing. And I and I say that as somebody who I'm not particularly into freshies, and I no, I struggle no, to find either. freshies I love. But this is going to work so well in the summer. The other thing about this, there is just a little bit, and I, I get this especially towards the end. There's a nice bit of tobacco leaf underpinning it. Yeah, well, they're, they're always a bit more body. They're always smoking in the film, and so that, that's I guess why they got the tobacco leaf um, that just adds a bit of warmth and body, yeah. which is maybe what steers it away from being, you know, an, an aquatic. Yeah, steers it in a different direction. It, do, it doesn't just it doesn't sort of do the lazy thing of what <sighs> so it does. So many citrus aquatic type I scents are very lazy, but this he, isn't at all. What one of the uh, ingredients I think he lists in in this, um, if I've written it down. Is his um, blue Oliver's blue shirt? So he's always wearing this very, very loose, ah. very light cotton shirt. And you imagine this freshly washed, freshly ironed blue uh, light linen shirt yeah. blowing in the wind. And you kind of get a bit from that. If I say that, it's got a, uh, it doesn't smell aldehyde, but it's got a slight fresh laundry quality. Yeah, which actually I love in perfume. And yeah. I don't smell as often as I would like. Anyway. Lovely one, lovely one to start with. Also my favourite musical, <coughs> I should point out. Billowing Blue Shirt. No, no Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, all right, sure. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, all right, beautiful, next one beautiful, beautiful. is called uh, St. Clement. So this is based on the same story, but um, I was a little bit confused. I didn't, I've seen the film, but I've not read the book of Call Me By Your Name. And from what I understand from the website, this is based on a chapter in the book which is not in the film. So it's, it's when the, the two of them as a couple go and spend some time in Rome. And each, oh god, this is very, Already, very, this is very, very, very different yeah. to the last one. So this is what they get up into Rome, uh, get up to when in Rome. Let's give it a, a fresh um, squirt. Already the range is, is sort of polar opposites oh, here. This, this is yeah. very, very different. Beautiful. Booze and chocolate and wood and the tobacco is much more prominent here. So this is where uh, maybe yeah. Oliver was about the fresh summer Italian days. This is about the nights. And there's yeah. there's a there's a kind of deep rich red wine and there's kind of a cherry. I've also got a strip here which I sprayed earlier. It is it is like a very beautiful sort of sauce reduction, isn't yeah, it? We, yeah, we're saying it's it, got that richness. It, something it smells kind of inherently Italian. It, the yeah. in your, you imagine like a reduced passata. It doesn't smell of tomatoes, but you think of that kind of richness and you, of, yeah. of, of the of the dark polished wood. There's a feel of that. I get bits of coffee, I get yeah. bits of dark red wine. And I was saying the red wine, I always imagine it's, it's, a, it's a heavy Chianti or one of those super Tuscan red wines. Right oh, at, it's got right, some real body to it, hasn't it? Right yeah. at the end of it, it's the kind of direct It's still, still of herbaceous and green and, and it has some lift as well. It doesn't just sink down into the depths of the but flavor. It is, it's, 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 yeah, I know what you mean. Considering all these notes sound so dark and heavy, there is something kind of playful to yeah, it. Yeah, it, it still has a bit of, a bit of energy and zing. too serious. I would say uh, 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 Prin's, um, mm. Prin Parfum all feel in intensely serious and heavy. These do feel a little bit lighter in nature. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about a sillage of performance here, just they, they feel a little bit more playful. They're more suggestive as well. A bit more tongue in cheek. Of, it says this is the image I have in my mind, if you have something different so that's nice fine. Thing. That's great stuff. Completely red and red from. wine, a very under, yeah, it's sort a, of very it underused aspect in perfume. But, yeah. but but not that much. When you consider that the first thing we do with a good red wine is stick our nose in and smell it. Yeah, it's amazing how yeah, little yeah, we yeah, see yeah, it yeah. in perfumery. Right, let's move on to our, our, our third of these. Uh, again, something completely different. This is called uh, Virginia. So um, when I um, Heard about this? I assume Virginia was going to be Virginia cedar, cedar, and it's going to be a woody fragrance. It is not at all. So this is based on Virginia Woolf, um, the English writer, and it's also based on the film uh, The Hours, which is a film about the life of Virginia Woolf. Um, and if you've seen the film, it starts with a scene um, about uh, Miss Dalloway, which is a book by Virginia Woolf in which she's preparing flowers for a wedding. So there's a big. Um, this is a floral fragrance. Yeah. Essentially, he describes it as a floral fragrance. But quite unlike, quite unlike, you, you know, your traditional um, floral. I it's not straight out of the florist's fresh and Not dandies. at all. So he says he wants to capture an English spring garden. I don't, mm. I don't really get that. What I get is more like an English summer meadow. So I'm thinking of uh, wild flowers, not big, juicy, lush white flowers, just 
those flowers with which they, they're all stem and with little petal they're more delicate yeah and i'm also imagining yeah. in the late summer so they've been really almost dried out a bit by the sunshine yeah and and actually there's a feel here for me that they are this they're connected to the earth again they're not they're not flowers like um in a vase at home or, in, or in a florist shop they're still they're still connected there's they still a, have a, their there's a kind of herbal they still have their sort of well. food source there's a herbal quality, yeah. it, 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 an intensely green quality to yeah. it as well. So in this, so he, as well as being about the hours and, and um, Miss Dallary, he also is obviously thinking of Virginia Woolf herself. And let me just look at my notes, because he also on the website includes notes of paper, smoke, leather and melancholy. And I, I see Amazing. what he means by by melancholy. So this is not, as opposed to Oliver, which I found a very uplifting fragrance, yeah. this is not a big uplifting juicy floral no, fragrance. No, no. Nor is it overtly awful. sexual, because there are some florals are very... Yeah, like like tuberose can be very things, good, yeah. or, or rose obviously. This, this is not this, direction. this kind of feels moody and slightly yeah. austere. Yeah. And I do also get that paper vibe. Let's try. I mean, maybe I'm smelling paper. No, it's not that. But the, do you see what I mean? That kind of like, it's, almost, yeah, like, it's yeah. almost like a glossy magazine rather than, you know, writing paper or card. Yeah, you know, some, some magazines just have a smell that you love going back to. But I find, I find this uh, very intriguing, very... Is there a papyrus thing going on here? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. More of a kind of dried paper. Interesting, isn't it? It's very good though, it works. But I, can, I wouldn't I, expect it to. I'm really uh, looking forward to this. On a, I think I would most like to wear it. I would want to wear it on a spring day. Yeah, first day of spring. That's that's going to be yeah. an absolute banger, isn't it? Really but beautiful. Very very different. Let's just smell a slightly old one. I was saying to Dan earlier. It really kind of uh, see now. It after, this is the one we've worn for a while, and I did a bit more sweetness bit, coming out there. Yeah, now. and I think it, they have started to bloom a little bit. Yeah. And I found when I wear it, it just kind austere of, though. Yeah, it really is austere. austere isn't it? Kind of. A bit sad, really. Yeah. And we, uh, and we did compare it, it doesn't smell it exactly like, but it, it, there's something about it which reminds me a little bit of Après Londé. Yeah. Um, by um, by Galen, which has got much more violet and iris yeah. in it, whereas this doesn't have any violet and iris, I don't think. Um, but it's, but it's like a feel, tear and a smile at the same time. It feels it? very thoughtful. Yeah. This is not your average floral by any chance. Really interesting. I find that, I find that in its conceit very French. Yes, yeah, I know, it's it kind is of French and moody, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 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 like almost kind of Provence, not quite Provence because there's no lavender or anything, but hint of potpourri, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's something going on. Anyway, let's move very beautiful. on. So, uh, I'm a big fan so far, Dan. This I is another, another fragrance, completely different. This is another film, a film I really love. Um, the fragrance is called Gyorge, and it's based on a character from uh, the British film, um, God's Own Country, which is... That's an amazing, beautiful film about um, a young guy, I guess he's in his early 20s, um, on a farm, and I think it's kind of Yorkshire Moors, so he's working a very, very hard life in this very rough, wild um, landscape. Yeah. He's kind of battling through rain and storms, he's kind of herding sheep, yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of That's moody kind of character. He's also quite a self-destructive and you know he's kind of alcoholic he's got problems with his dad he's, he seems in many ways to seem miserable and then this uh, um, Romanian um, farmer called Gheorghe comes along to help him and it's about how they I guess it takes a kind of broke back mountain-esque kind of yeah so it's them alone in their wilderness so they can't go back to the farm because they're out in the auction was walking on this farm the landscape is a really really big part of the film and the landscape the auction moors Occasionally it's beautiful, you see these scenes of, um, of flowers, but a lot of the time it's really moody. There are these yeah, kind of peaty bogs, yeah. lots of fires, the kind of fires which I guess they're using to control the, uh, the farming somehow. Yeah. Um, anyway, let, let's, let's, uh, let's give it a, a sniff. Um, so we're really, not expecting bright green Yorkshire sunshine, I'm guessing. No, no, no we are not. Where and are that is not uh, what we get at all. So this opens with a really big pit, uh, hit of peat. <laughs> I mean, you can you can really yeah. get it there. Oh, so there's some other florals Beautiful. swimming around, but it's just this big, almost reminds you of, of a kind of a peaty Scotch whiskey, with oh. a kind of a kind of a, kind of a hay, grassy kind of hay vibe to it as well. Yeah. 
uh, and with a but initially, of, just it's all it's all peat, smoke, yeah. mud. Yeah, there's kind of a smokiness. They, they, they're Dirtiness. smoking a lot in. in um, and again, I just so Joe hasn't seen the film, so I showed him the trailer. If you if you watch the trailer online now, lots of kind of smoky, smouldering scenes. That happens a lot in the film. And you can feel the temperature of the landscape. Mm. You can feel it's cold and wet and damp. Yeah, there's something about this really which is that. not. Even though some of those notes used otherwise could create this kind of warmth, you know, warm hug, it's quite it's again something quite austere. Yeah, absolutely. What else does he say is in here? Um, yeah, so he well, yeah, he lists uh, or blue bow and Nar- narcissus are, are, are two of the flowers, and gardenia and elemi and immortelle. He lists lots of yeah. florals, which you don't. I don't get so much. I don't really get because I get this big peat, and I feel there there are some florals kind of going on behind, but I don't. I can't really pick them out as I would expect. As I would, you know, you would in the. But again, are, are, are they um, are they fresh florals? Are they, you know, are mm. these sort of is this sort of rotten? Sort of rotten flower that yeah, possibly that have, that have sort of imbued this soil and peatiness with sort of a ghost of what it was in the spring. Now I'm already starting to get, and I found when I wore this, I started to get this kind of burnt tyres film, oh, feel, like feel to feel yeah. to it, kind of rubbery. I would love that. Um, yeah, real burnt rubber. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I. I, I have an association which I know is, is completely my own thing, but that's what perfume is, I guess, of rubber dinghy. And I, I always get this sort of weird, strong rubber dinghy smell with this sort yeah, of rubber. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Let me just read out his. Um, this is a list of notes from the website. So Honey as well. The first, the first note he lists is farm boys, <laughs> Yorkshire spring, <laughs> mud, spring boys. flowers, dried hay, dark wood, earthy. I mean, you really get all of that, except what the farm boy smell? Well, I don't know. Peat, obviously, I guess. Oh, I want to say beautiful. It's not the right word. Beautifully yeah. done. Yeah, I, I find this. If I were to say, in a way, this is really the most challenging of these uh, uh, of these five fragrances, but really interesting. If you like, if you like dark, peaty, slightly unconventional fragrances with a hint of, you know, burnt condom. Yeah, that, well, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know if he's going for the condom thing, but I. I get a hint of. There's the, something the of that. There's something of this sort of sweet. To quote Alan Partridge, isn't it? Like vulcanized rubber, as he would say. <laughs> yeah. But there is something of that there. Really interesting fragrance. I have no, mm. and I have no idea. I I like it a lot. I have no idea when I would wear it and the yeah. sort of scenario. But I. As it's a smell a winter, in its own right. It's a kind of winter, autumn, we winter. Yeah. But it's certainly for people who like fragrances which paint stories. And if you watch the That's film, the thing, it's absolutely. very evocative. Yeah. You know, even having just seen the, the, the trailer we just watched now, yeah, it, it really seems it to fit fits. With that. It really fits. Right. So, last fragrance Beautiful. is based on a Korean, um, a South Korean film called um, Burning. Um, and this is called Burning Ben, which is uh, based around one of the characters who's called Ben. Um, who um, is a pyromaniac, as far as I can... Yeah. How, how much the film... Burns the trailer. people's greenhouses. Um, so we're expecting something smoky. That's not precisely what I get with it, actually. Um, I get... A, oh, I really, really like this one. It's a beast, isn't it? <laughs> I really like this one. I get um, a really dark, boozy, plummy, chocolate, coffee, Strong. woods. It's this... All the dark, beautiful, delicious things. You know, can I give you a really bad association? Before I'm getting already on my second smell, I'm getting the coffee, but I'm getting that beautiful thing. If you could stick your head in a box of the finest dark chocolate liqueurs at Christmas time, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Which one shall I have? Which one shall I have? And you stick yeah. your whole head in. This is it. But, but it's, it's very dark chocolate. It's really bitter, kind of cacaoy, kind of chocolate. And the oh, and the God. booze is dark and rich. The espresso is really strong. And you know what? <laughs> and I'm, I did a, I did someone. Oh. I did a click with that someone else. Um, <laughs> I'll do a spin. This thing here what you think like? reminds me that actually you can get good coffee fragrances, and still I struggle yeah. because they're always the sweeter sort of Starbucksy. Yeah. So this I, is not. That's a that's a intoxicated Killian. Yeah. Another one. That dark espresso. What? Feel. And, to- and Turkish leather. Turkish leather. Like yeah. This doesn't smell like Turkish leather. This is very. It's weird that you this can is not, get. There are a lot of those similar notes. Can't you? Um, um, to Turkish leather, which is also by Prin Ramos, but it's none, none, like none of the playfulness. None of the. This is, None this, of the this smile. Is, it's, it's weird that uh, I, I've just said these are all the dark, beautiful, lovely notes that we, you know, chocolate, plums, booze, coffee. It, it, 
you're, you're right, there is somehow a bit of lightness to it. This, well, there is still a lightness there. I don't know yeah. what it is, but it... I always get a hint of tar, like a hint of tarmac. Yeah, that's true. And, and a hint, a very, very subtle hint, not as much as Gorgay, but a hint of burning tyres as well, just a little bit. Nowhere near yeah. as much as Gorgay. But, and I get a hint of smouldering wood. And I, actually, I found that when I wore it, some of the brightness that you get at the front, the kind of, uh, the booze disappeared. And as I wore it longer, I got more of the kind of smouldering dark wood. I found this last, all of them uh, lasted very well. I kind of got 10, even on, even on the Oliver, which is a, a light scent, I, you know, it dies down a lot after about three or four hours. But they all lasted well. This particularly lasted well, though. It's, I got a, you could it feels still like smell it. Could, it could be an extra year or yeah. something. It's so concentrated, isn't it? Yeah. The, you know, that, I, could, I could easily imagine sitting in an old leather armchair by a fire with a really, with a really nice dark cognac. Yeah. Some eighty percent chocolate. Mm. I'm slightly diabetic, so I give. Up, I'm not. My character is yeah. gives off a slightly sweet skin smell. Yeah, the combination so just, just, is incredible. Just, just talk about performance. Um, what a range! But Burning Ben and Gyorgy, both of those lasted a very long time. I'm talking about twelve hours. You could still smell them uh, very well. Yeah, we can't. We can't really show this very effectively. But on, but on the card, it's completely discoloured from having. It's discoloured and also. There's a sort of sheen of oil on there. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Yeah, so it's really good. You know, they are eau de parfum, you know, possibly bordering on, oh. on, on X-ray. Uh, St. Clement's, I also got good performance. That was more about um, kind of six to eight hours. Um, Still damn good, isn't it? The, the other two, uh, uh, Virginia and Oliver, I found that after about four hours, they died down and turned to skin scents for uh, about another three or four hours but I still when I applied them in the morning at seven or eight o'clock I still could um, detect them around kind of five or six in the afternoon but they yeah. had the head died down but I would think for the nature of the sense especially Oliver is one you would keep with you and this dinky little bottle you'd reapply and yeah. I can't wait to do that in summer and you know like you said these are the perfect sizes like we've got big collections of stuff yeah. a hundred mil bottle you barely use the thing and yeah. actually for 30 mils at that value yeah I don't, I don't think there's anything really like this on the market, is there? If you had to pick one of these to go out and buy, what would you buy? It's a tough one. I think for my kind of, my headspace, I think Burning Ben, um, but also Oliver, I love in a, in a different way. Mm. It just brings a smile to my face and yeah. I love it. But I think, I mean, I think they're all bloody good, to be honest. I mean, I would... I would buy all of them and just have them as a sort of I, starter set of... I would buy Oliver because, as I said, I don't... There aren't many freshies I like, and this is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And really kind of special. But although, you know, um, Burning Ben does so many other things I love. This I, appeals to my moody side. I wore this around Christmas, and it was a great fragrance at Christmas. Yeah. But I have to say, I'm also really... I really found Virginia interesting and quite unlike anything I tried before. And I'm looking forward to trying that a bit more. Yeah. Instead. The thing is, I mean, you've got to try them in different scenarios, haven't you? Yeah. You know, you could wear one of these one day and feel another way. Try one of them in spring when the weather changes. Yeah, absolutely. Could be a completely different experience. You can tell they're all so damn well made. But I like, I, I like the fact that they're all based. Well, they, they're, you know, quite. They are based on personality. They're based on characters yeah, as absolutely. well. Absolutely. So go and see their fil the films as well. They're really. Yeah, I'm going to. I've seen especially them. God's Own Country and Call Me mm. by Your Name, two films I really, really love. Yeah. Interesting fragrances, really beautiful. Fun. So tell Britain me if, does you, it again. if you have tried them um, and experienced them, let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But tell us what you think. Until next time, happy sniffing. Bye.